Good morning. Good morning. It's December 12th. Uh, back in my truck, like I said I would be. <laughs> Let's talk real estate investing. Um, last time I talked about how I don't use inspections or get inspections. Uh, nothing against them, but that's just how I roll. Because I'm, from my sheet, unsophisticated, untraditional, unconventional, and unorthodox in my real estate <laughs> um, venture. Today, I want to talk about the use of credit reports. Everybody's got a credit score, or you don't have a credit score. Um, used throughout the industry. Uh, but when it comes to tenants and screening tenants, I don't place a lot of value in a credit score. Uh, I don't have a credit score minimum that I convey to potential tenants, et cetera. Um, we know that your credit profile is what makes the world go round, unfortunately. Um, I've learned over the years that it certainly doesn't tell me what kind of person you are or what kind of tenant you're going to be. Um, and so in large part, I haven't used them maybe but a handful of times. Um, I don't want to have to pay for somebody's credit report. So I think I mentioned I'm a penny pincher. I'm like, I don't need to pull somebody's credit. I'll simply just ask a potential tenant that looks okay on paper, you know, looks okay on a rental application that they filled out. Hey, what's your credit like? Does it suck? Is it great? Is it something you want to brag about? Is it something you wish would go away? Do you know? <laughs> and it's it's uh, it's amazing the kind of answers you get. Uh, I like an honest answer. I like when somebody says, heck, James, I don't know. Who knows? Or the minute you mention credit, if they're quick to say, my credit is pathetic. It's, it's horrible. And then they launch into why it's horrible. I'll let somebody talk and tell me, okay, you went through a real rocky period and your credit profile certainly reflects that. You have a lot of bills that you intentionally or unintentionally haven't paid. Uh, you're in debt up to your eyeballs. You've got all these past debts. A lot of them have been written off, et cetera, et cetera. So I like, uh, as I'm sure most real estate investors, like transparency, like when somebody's being honest, like when they, you know, um, tell the truth and don't claim that their credit is great when it's horrible. If somebody has a conversation with me like that, why do I need to pull their credit to verify, yes, your score is laughable? Um, now, again, it's always nice to hear somebody say, oh, my credit is sterling. I've always paid my bills on time uh, and make rent a priority, et cetera, et cetera. So having that conversation is great. The necessity to pull somebody's credit to verify that, not all that important to me. Um, and 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 again, it doesn't tell you what kind of tenant they're gonna be. It doesn't, it might be an indicator as to whether or not they'll pay their debts on time. <laughs> I'm gonna state the obvious, but um, it's a small piece of a holistic view of somebody. So should you toss out somebody, put them on the, they're not going to get a call back from me 
pile um, of potential applicants? I, I wouldn't. If everything else tells you, I think this person might be a good fit. I think my property may be a, you know, this, this may work out well. They're a good communicator. They were honest and straightforward and had a good story to tell. So if, if they have a lot of positives working for them, but their credit is pathetic, should you toss them aside? Personally, I don't think I would. I, I, I would probably conclude they don't go in the discard uh, pile and they deserve a second look or consideration, further consideration. Um, now, here's something that's cool. Because of the modern world we live in and because of tools like Zillow and Apartments.com and all these places where you can market your property, which I do, I, I use those tools. Um, just by virtue of using these platforms, you get access to credit reports most of the time. So one that just comes to me that I don't have to pay for, uh, sure, I'll look at it. That takes five seconds, but I don't, I don't sit there and, and worry and think, oh gosh, again, I had a minimum credit score um, threshold and they haven't met that. Um, now, I'll tell you questions I get all the time from potential uh, applicants is, what are your minimum requirements? Now, I feel differently about that particular question. Here's why. I kind of read between the lines and think, okay, if someone is asking me that question, there's a fair chance they know on paper they look horrible. You know, they know their credit is horrible. They know that their income is insufficient. They know that their job history looks bad. Um, so, so on paper, they can assess themselves and say, boy, do I look like just a awesome potential tenant? And I think uh, the smart ones say no. So they'll ask me, hey, what are those minimums? What are your minimum requirements to lease your property? I do take that as a negative sign. Um, and my response is about as honest as can be. My truthful response is, I don't have any minimums. There's not some specific criteria that I use to see if somebody measures up, to see if they might be a potential uh, good fit. Again, I'm untraditional, unorthodox, unconventional, unsophisticated. So most real estate investors would say, what? You don't have any parameters? You're an idiot. Well, call me an idiot. <laughs> Maybe I am. I look at somebody holistically. So there's not, you know, I, I could probably think of some things that would absolutely discredit you from being my potential tenant. But um, aside from those, you know, those, besides from that fact, I try to look at somebody holistically and, and not have set in stone criteria. Um, so I'm not pulling credit reports. I get them now because I'm using these platforms. I'll look at them because they're free. They're there for me to use as a 
landlord, uh, which is cool. Um, but they certainly don't drive my decisions. They, uh, I, and I ask, I ask, Hey, what's your credit like? Do you know, do you care? Let's talk about it. So I think it's good to have that conversation. I'm looking at my notes here. Oh, this is something I always ask too. Is there something in your past I need to know about? <laughs> so credit aside, you know, there are other things that landlords, property owners, investors like me want to know. Hey, did you just break out of jail? Are you a criminal? Are you about to, um, you know, commit a crime in my rental property, et cetera, et cetera. I place a little bit more value on that question than I do on the, hey, what's your credit score? Um, and again, I ask, hey, um, I will say, listen, I, I don't know if I'm going to pull a background check. Is there anything you want to tell me about um, a prior life, something that happened in your past? Let's have that discussion. People, people will be honest. Hey, James, a million moons ago when I was a young person, I did something really stupid. And then they spill the guts, spill the beans, whatever. Or, hey, James, I was involved in this matter. And I like transparency. I will thank somebody. I will say, thank you so very much for sharing that with me. Thank you for being transparent. Um, and I will tell them uh, I need to take all this under consideration before making a decision, obviously. Um, and I'll tell people, if I, if I pull a background check, is there something I'm going to see that you'd like to get out in front of and tell me about? Yes or no? I have heard some stories. This occurred. This was the result. You will see this on a background check. I'll thank somebody for being honest, for not holding back important information. And that is a little more important than a credit score in, in my book. Um, but again, it's just a discussion. I get access to background checks through these tools, much like a credit report. So I'll look. Um, something else, credit reports. So we talked about credit reports. I don't necessarily use them or get them. I get them free now. Background check, same thing applies. I get them free now. I'll look. I'll ask. Let's have that conversation. The other thing is evictions. That may be, as I'm sitting here rubbing my chin, that may be one thing that carries more weight than a lot of other factors that go into that holistic look at a potential tenant. An eviction is pretty straightforward. Uh, they were evicted for one reason or the other. Um, could they be a repeat offender? There's always that real possibility. Could somebody have had an eviction and now they are quite the model tenant? Of course. So I'll ask, had any evictions? You, let's talk about it. How recent? What was the nature of the convic conviction? So forth and so on. And then you listen and you listen intently and you take notes and then you think, gosh, that is a deal breaker for me or maybe it's not. Okay, so um, you can find so much content out on the web about pulling credit reports, pulling background checks, um, asking about evictions, blah, 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 blah. All great to educate yourself. 
but I just wanted to, again, give you a different perspective and give you my weird approach and how it's not an absolute necessity to, to use any of these things. Having a discussion, yeah, pretty dang important. I'll certainly do that. So learn to learn to have a conversation with any potential uh, applicant. And I'll sign off by saying this, uh, back to the criteria. You know, I'll tell somebody, hey, I'm accepting applications at this stage. No, I don't have set criteria. You are well more than welcome to fill out an application. And then I tell people this, while I don't have set criteria, if I believe, if I feel like you might potentially be a good fit for me in the property, you'll hear from me. So I, I leave the ball in my court. I will, I will tell folks, hey, I can't clone myself, so I won't be able to follow up with everybody. I just, uh, there's only so many hours in the day, but if I feel like you might be a good fit, you'll hear from me. I try not to offend people. Sometimes people get offended. Um, and um, what I want them to know is if you don't hear back from me, it's a pass for one reason or the other. And I wish you all the best in your search. Best of luck to you in your search. Um, and hopefully nobody gets offended at that. Sometimes people want to know why you passed on their application. Um, the, the answer is usually, it's that's a complicated answer that I can't give you. So I tell them, if I believe that you've that you might potentially be a good fit, you'll hear from me. If not, I truly wish you the best of luck in your search. That's all for today. Get you get yourself some coffee. Hope this was helpful. Peace.